Forgiving is love's toughest work and love's biggest risk. If you twist it into something it was never meant to be, it can make you a doormat or an insufferable manipulator. Forgiving seems almost unnatural. Our sense of fairness tells us people should pay for the wrong they do. But forgiving is love's power to break nature's rule. And that was said by Lewis B. Smeedes. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I'll be your host for the next hour. I'd like to say hi and thank you to all the people that have emailed me in the last week as well, folks. I've actually been unplugged the last week since last Saturday. I've been unplugged after I did the show last Saturday. I didn't come back online again until Thursday. I've been away participating in this Lafeneron diet, and I'll tell you, I'm definitely feeling a few die-offs inside me, a few fungal growths that don't like leaving the body, a few mood swings, and it's been a very, very interesting week. Or an interesting two weeks, I probably should say, folks, because I've actually been on the diet for two weeks now, and it's definitely been affecting me. I've been feeling some major die-offs, so I'll keep you posted on the progress. But the theme of today's show is forgiveness, and it's probably going to be a bit of a personal show because I think that by discussing forgiveness in a personal manner, I may be able to help those who are seeking the same. Forgiving really is important, folks, and it is tough. And one of the most difficult things that I've found people can do really is for them to forgive themselves. And I'm basing the show on this today because of the amount of emails I receive from people who seem incapable of forgiving themselves. A lot of people seem to be very down on themselves. They judge themselves poorly because of things they've done in the past. And many of them seem to believe that they can never create a future for themselves because of the past they have that haunts them. But folks, you can forgive yourself. You've got to understand that the people who wronged you and the wrong that you did to other people was simply part of the learning process. You know, we're learning creatures. We're learning animals. I recommend you listen to someone like John Lash when he, he talks about these sorts of things. I recently read his book, actually, Not in His Image, and I, I found it to be an incredibly important work. And he explains very well in that book how mankind are learning creatures. The human animal, he calls us, are learning creatures. That's how we evolve. But of course, in order to learn, we need to be able to make mistakes and we have to be able to forgive ourselves of our mistakes. I mean, people have done the wrong thing to me in the past and I'm sure that I've done the wrong thing by other people in the past. But ultimately, the wrong that I did was a reaction to a supremely adverse environment. And it's the same for everybody, folks, because this supremely adverse environment is the world that we are all forced to grow up in. When you look at the condition humankind is kept in, we're told up is down and black is white. We're told we have to pay to be alive. We're kept in this incredibly dysfunctional reality which does not serve humankind in any way, shape or form. And we're told that we have to make it work. But often it doesn't work, and so we react adversely to this environment. And we end up at loggerheads with people around us. We end up very often seeing ourselves as a victim, feeling that the world owes us, and we create a little bubble of self-preservation around ourselves. And we never let anybody in. And we do things so that only we gain from our actions because really that's all that's important is that we are looked after. And we're taught this. We're taught that you always have to look after number one. That's the only thing that's important. There's a sucker born every minute. No one cares about you. And the only person who will ever look after you or stand up for you or look out for you is yourself. And it doesn't matter about other people. If wrong comes to them from your actions, then that is their problem. I mean, on the surface, of course, they'll tell you exactly the opposite of this, but when you look at the way people are manipulated within society and certain rules that people are subject to and the punishment and on the hierarchy and the peer group pressure and all the things that they're subject to, then you begin to see that beneath the surface of what they say, it's actually very different. 
And so that's kind of the way we are trained to behave through our education system and through the business structure that we enter into once we leave the education system. Our whole social structure, folks, it's really based on one-upmanship and profiteering at the expense of others. That's what this system is all about. And so it's no wonder that we see people within this society who grow up to be dysfunctional, grow up to be self-serving, grow up to be not what they thought they were going to grow up to be. And then as they get older, it often becomes very, very difficult for these people to forgive themselves. And even though they look at the world around them and they long for a better world and a better place and they long to be doing something positive for the world and leaving a positive legacy behind from the life that they've led, they find it difficult to take the first step because they're too locked into their past and what they may have done in their past. And this is what I'm hearing from a lot of people that are emailing me. They want change, but they are afraid of who they are or who they believe they are. They are afraid of their past. They are afraid that now that they've done the wrong thing, they can never do the right thing. But it's simply not true, folks. You can always do the right thing no matter what you've done in the past. And I'm living proof of this, folks. I mean, I was a musician for most of my life, and I don't know how many people out there know professional musicians, but the life of a professional musician is one of the most superficial lives you'll ever come across. And again, I'm generalizing here, folks, and I'm sure not all musicians are self-serving and egotistical and not all live completely superficial lifestyles, but many do because it's the type of lifestyle that the industry attracts and promotes. It's a very egotistical life. It's a very self-serving life. And that's what I did. And really, when you look at it, folks, it's even worse for me because I was awake when I was four years old. But then I got to a certain point in life where I just couldn't handle it anymore. I just thought, this is ridiculous. I don't want to participate in this reality. So I learned to play guitar, left high school, halfway through high school, didn't even finish high school. And I went out and I disengaged from the world and I became totally self-indulgent and I stayed that way for the next 20 or 25 years. And again, folks, I was worse than you because I knew about all this situation. I was researching the whole thing on the side while I was out living my superficial life as a musician. I didn't care about people. I didn't care about anybody except myself because that's the only defense I had against this reality. And it wasn't until I actually had a son which was when I was about 35 years old, I had my son. And that's when I began to see that I should have done things differently and that I could do things differently. And that's when the change came about in my life. And I really started to change my perspective and to see the worth in the people around me. But up to that point, folks, I was totally self-indulgent, had a chip on my shoulder. Actually, I was probably more evenly balanced than most others because I would say that I had a chip on both shoulders and I was my own worst enemy for many, many years. But then I began to see that there are better ways of doing things and that the people around me are actually just as important as myself. But I didn't always have the perspective that I have now and it took years and years of mistakes and self-serving attitude for me to have the perspective that I have now. And a lot of the reason why I do the shows is so that people who listen to the shows won't make the same mistakes that I made. There might be someone out there who's young, who's a teenager or in their 20s, and they listen to the show, and they can avoid making the mistakes that I made simply by listening and understanding who and what they are a lot earlier in the piece. Because it took me a long time to find out what life was really all about, folks. And as I said, if I really want to look at myself, I could be down on myself more than most people because, as I said, I already knew when I was four years old how messed up this world was. But I just forgot about it. I indulged myself in smoking pot and playing guitar and tuned out of society for 25 years, 30 years. And then one day I just woke up and went, wow, I've just missed out on 30 years of my life. I've just missed out on 30 years of positive input I could have made to the world. And it's about time I changed it and started doing the right thing. 
And that's when I started speaking out. That's when I started hitting chat rooms and trying to wake people up to the fact that 9-11 was staged. That's when I started making films and doing radio shows and trying to teach the world through the mistakes that I myself had made. I've always found that one of the really interesting things about life is that life can be understood quite perfectly when viewed in reverse. And if only we were born with the knowledge that we gain during our life, but then I suppose there wouldn't be much point to life, would there? That would be interesting, folks. It would be interesting to actually be born knowing what reality was all about and seeing where we could take it from there. And I'm sure that's the way we used to be. I'm sure when we lived on this planet and we had a connection to source and a connection to nature and a connection to the planet itself, then perhaps we were born with that knowledge. Perhaps we were born with a completely different perspective and perhaps that's how we were able to achieve some of the great things that we see lying around the planet that were built by previous civilizations. And perhaps that's what we're waking up to now, folks. And the great thing about this awakening process is to hear the message that is being brought to the world now by so many different researchers from so many different fields. Because what we're hearing, folks, is that ultimately it's beginning to be all the same message. I think that's what happens, folks, is that once enough people start researching and we all start researching similar things, eventually everybody comes to the same conclusion. And there's so many people that are doing it now, folks, and that's actually one thing that's very reassuring is to hear the message that most of the people out there are now bringing to people because the message is becoming homogenized. It's becoming condensed, and you're finding that almost everybody out there, all of the legitimate researchers, are bringing the people of the world virtually the same message now. It's like the same words are coming out of everybody's mouth because the information is there in the field and people are waking up to the fact that reality does not have to be this way. And you can't be down on yourself because of your past because your past is a product of this society. When we're young, we don't have the perspective that we need to be able to deal with this reality. We're young, we're taught that it's all about the economic model, it's all about the social system, it's all about our social standing, what we look like, where we sit in the food chain, where we sit in the social hierarchy, but it's all fiction. It's all fiction designed to lead you away from that moment of self-discovery that you need, that moment of self-discovery that it took me until I was 35 years old before I found. But then even when you find it, folks, it's still a process. You've found this new reality. You've found this new understanding of yourself. And your life changes at that point. And it took you 35 years to get to that point of dysfunction. It took me 35 years to get there. So then it's a slow process back to actually being who and what you are and actually seeing things for what they are, seeing reality for the way it works and seeing this society truly for what it really is. But it's all got to come back to you understanding what you are. And as I've so often said, folks, we've been brutalized up to this point. So this is a slow process. Once you discover the truth about yourself, getting to know yourself from that point is not something that just happens overnight. It's a slow process. So you've got to learn to forgive yourself. You've got to be kind to yourself. You can't judge yourself for what you've done. Judge yourself by what you do. And that's what you need to look at. That's the attitude you need to adopt because that's the way you can move forward. You know, for all those people that are out there saying to me, you know, it's my past. It's the stuff that I've done. It prevents me from being what I want to be. It only does that if you carry it around. And it's the same as if someone's done something bad to you, folks. If they've done something bad to you and you are still stressed out about it and you are still in a point where you cannot forgive this person, well, basically, they did the crime, but now you're doing the time. You have to let that go. One of the most empowering things you can ever do for yourself is to forgive others. And you won't be able to do that unless you can forgive yourself. You've probably got to be able to forgive yourself for forgiving them. But I believe the way you do that is to understand what society is, what's led people to the mindset that they have. Because everybody's so disconnected. Everybody is so disconnected from this, this Mother Earth that we live on. 
so disconnected from our higher selves, so disconnected from our higher senses. We live in this completely false paper-based reality that we're all spelling by the word magic we're locked into, by our understanding of reality that's fed to us in a book somewhere, you know, a book that somebody wrote. We're given their perspective of reality and we're told reality has to fit within certain scientific parameters for it to be reality. And we're kept in this, this spellbound reality. It's a matrix, folks. We literally live in a world that only appears the way we believe it to be. And it's because we believe that there are certain parameters and there are certain systems that must be abided by and certain laws that must be abided by, certain laws of geometry, laws of creation, all this sort of stuff. We believe that's all there is to it. And even the laws that govern aging and the laws that govern what we're capable of, we're kept locked into this because of someone else's belief that's been given to us. And the way we don't forgive ourselves and don't forgive others is, is a product of this society. There is no real justice in the world, folks. The only justice you'll ever find, I mean, justice is a construct, but the only justice you'll ever really find is your conscience. It's when you discover yourself and you realize what you have. Even if you've done bad things, you get to a point in your life where you realize what you have and you realize your ability to do good things. And you find that when you do good things, good things happen. The world just works. Synchronicities start coming into your life and things just happen. If you can improve the reality of everybody that you come into contact with, make their world better because they saw you. Try to do something right. You might have to see someone as part of a, a learning process or a growing process for yourself. It may be strange. It may be hard to deal with someone from your past that you've had to deal with. But again, it's it's a good thing, it's a beautiful thing, and it can be something very, very empowering and very inspiring and something you can absolutely grow from. But you'll only do it through forgiveness of them and forgiveness of yourself. It's very, very important, folks. And like I said, I, I think it's it's a product of this society because when you see how, how brutalised people have been, you can't blame people for becoming what they've become. You can't blame society for what it does. You can't even blame the people that work within the political systems and business structures that are out there raping the environment, folks, because it's all a product of this this system, this society. And this society is, is so far removed from what humankind should be that it becomes impossible to judge people. I mean, really, when you look at it, it becomes impossible because you're not... You're not judging them on an even playing field. You're not even judging yourself on an even playing field. So you've got to be able to forgive yourself. Everybody's got to be able to put it all away, put everything that we did in the past away and figure out the best way forward from this point. Recently I saw a TED Talk, actually, Graham Hancock speaking. It was a banned TED Talk. Someone sent me, a friend of mine sent me this link and said, did you see this TED Talk? And it was Graham Hancock talking about his ayahuasca experience in Peru. And something that he said in that talk really struck home when he said that our disconnection from the plants, the willingness of our government, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, I can't remember the exact words, but he said something about the way our governments have actually prevented us from accessing the plants and accessing the plant medicine and locked us away from shamanism would appear that they have literally taken humankind's destiny away from them. And he suggested that if you look back at where language and rock art and all of this stuff created, it seems to have happened at the same time that mankind discovered anthropogenic plants and that perhaps these plants were put there by creation by consciousness, in order for us to use, in order to involve our artistic and creative senses. And I've got to admit that that is an incredibly interesting theory, folks, because the rock art that we see back then is, is quite amazing, and apparently he's dated it. I mean, he's been out, he's written whole books on this. I remember reading his book, Fingerprints of the Gods, many years ago, fantastic book. And so he's actually been to these places and seen these things. And his suggestion that these plants may well have played a significant role in our ability to create and our ability to develop these creative things in, in our consciousness is a is an incredibly intriguing idea. And he really did suggest that the damage our government is doing to us by preventing us from accessing these psychotropic plants is is a 
one of the greatest crimes that's ever been committed against humankind, and he believes that that is our way back. And this is fantastic to hear him say this, because when I had my experience in Peru, the, the download that I got from the Amazon jungle and the need to preserve these ancient traditions as the way back was the most important thing that came to me from that ceremony. That was the most important message that I got from the ceremony. And now here we have another man, a very well-respected author, saying the same thing. And people that I've spoken to that have done ceremony in Peru have all come up with this same understanding. They've all had this same feeling, this, this connection to what is essentially a feminine spirit, a mother goddess of this planet, and a real need to preserve these shamanistic traditions, you know, a real need to bring to society and help society understand the importance of these shamanistic traditions and the importance of preserving these cultures. And this really is another way of looking at the damage our government's done, folks, and it's another reason why we have to rein these people in. We really do. We've got to realise that we don't have to be subservient to government. Government has to be subservient to us. That's a whole other show. But again, it all comes back to this, this understanding of what reality is, folks. And when you can see that that's what reality is supposed to be like, we're actually supposed to have this higher connection. We're actually supposed to have more DMT active in our body. We're actually supposed to be living in a completely different type of reality to what we are. Then it becomes a lot easier to forgive people and it becomes a lot easier to forgive yourself because the reality is, folks, that even if we bring down this system, we have got so far to go to get back to what we should be. And that's why I don't think we can bring down the system. We have to find a way of reining it in, holding it in line, and putting it back on track to lead us back to where we were. It's been a series of sequential steps that have brought us here, and we need to take these same series of sequential steps to go back to where we should be. And that's what's important. So, you know, really it's just a broader perspective, folks. But I truly believe that if you understand what reality is and you understand your connection to reality, you understand what this system is and what it has done to human consciousness, then it becomes very, very easy to forgive everybody and forgive yourself and forgive everything. Because that past, that past within the system is only important as a learning experience, something that we can remember so that we can remember never to do that again, to never be led astray again, to never be led so far from the path of human destiny that we should be on, and especially never to be led there by psychopathic politicians that we've elected to positions of trust who we trusted to do exactly the opposite of what they're doing. It's very, very important for people to realize this and to put things in the right perspective before they judge themselves too harshly because we've all made mistakes and it doesn't matter about the mistakes, folks. The mistakes led you to who and what you are today. And here you are with the knowledge of those mistakes. Here you are with the knowledge of your past. Here you are with the knowledge of all the wrong that you've done. But by being aware of that, you are granted a beautiful gift, a wonderful gift, because now you have the means at your fingertips to change direction and to make up for the past. It doesn't matter what you did. It matters what you do. That's the important thing, folks. We all learn in the ways that are given to us to learn. The important thing is what we do with that information, what we choose to do with it. And that's why it's important to forgive yourself and to forgive others as well. If people wronged you, folks, you've got to understand they did so because of this system. They did so because they're disconnected. And when you look at how brutalized human consciousness has become and what it has been subject to, it's no wonder that people harvest energy from those around them because most people are completely disconnected from source and they don't know themselves. They don't know how to function in this reality and they do anything they can to try to claw their way to the top of the pile because that's what they're trained to do. 
But the reality, folks, is that there is no pile. It's just an illusion. It's a fiction. You know, we spend our lives collecting stuff because we believe that if we own all this stuff, we'll be better people. But what we find really at the end of it is that we never owned anything. All that stuff owned us, if you really look at it. You know, you own all this stuff and you can't go anywhere, you can't move anywhere, you can't do anything because you've got all this stuff you're concerned about. So it owns you. It ties you to that one spot on the planet and you never really get to experience yourself. You never really get to experience the world from the perspective that you should. It's a very backwards society, folks. Everything that's been done in this society has been designed to imitate reality but to turn it all on its head to make it all backwards. And I think the concept that we would not forgive ourselves is also backwards. You've got to forgive yourself. You know, we've got to let the whole thing go because if we keep holding on to it, we're doing the time, we're tying ourselves to the past and we're never going to be able to make the future that we need. And I think the more and more this message gets out to people, then the better the world's going to be. The more people who are speaking out about the need to return to nature, the need to return to shamanistic practices, the need to get our connection back to the earth, the better. Because I think that really is the only way back. We've got to put aside all of our false concepts, all of our externalization of salvation. There is no external saviour. The saviour is yourself. There is no one to blame for the situation that we're in. The blame, again, comes to ourselves because it is ourselves that have allowed ourselves to be subject to this system. It's like me, folks. Like I said, I saw it there, but I just disconnected from it. So who am I to blame others for the world being in the state that it's in? Because there was a time when I knew what was going on, but I thought it was too big and too insurmountable, and ultimately I just didn't really care because I'd found my little niche, my little place where I was safe, And I just walked that path because that's the path I understood. And I didn't care. But it gets to a time when you realize that, well, hang on, you have to care. You have to pay attention and you do have to care because we're not here to not care. We're not here to hold grudges. We're not here to indulge ourselves in these things. We're here to shift this reality into something beneficial for those who come after. We are here as custodians only for a little while, but we need to take the role seriously and we need to pay attention to what's happening. But I think it's break time, folks, so we'll leave it there for now. Thank you for joining me on the show today and I'll speak to you again in a few minutes. Thanks for listening. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people out there hearing this and are going to be thinking, well, what are you talking about with all this forgiveness? You're asking us to forgive psychopathic people. You're asking us to forgive people who have done an irreparable amount of damage to this planet and have acted out an enormous amount of atrocities, not only towards humankind, but to all life. How can you expect us to forgive these people? And that's okay, folks, because you'll find these people probably won't allow themselves to be forgiven. They won't allow it to come into their psyche because they don't know how to forgive anybody. And they probably won't allow themselves to be forgiven. You'll find these people will continue to act out their psychopathic tendencies and they'll probably end up locked up in jail or whatever, simply out of a necessity to do so. But the point is that even if you are in a position where you are forced to enact judgment against such a person, do so with forgiveness in your heart. Do so because it needs to be done not because you hate them or seek vengeance or anything like that. Simply do what needs to be done. There's a big difference, folks. There really is. And I could act in such a way, if I was put on a a, a judgment bench and I was forced to preside and make judgment over the actions of a psychopath, I would have no problem in making that judgment, but I would be doing so with forgiveness in my heart. I would be doing so with pity in my heart. Because I pity a psychopath. I pity someone being born into reality with that mindset and that lack of empathy. I can't imagine how difficult life must be for them. And they probably don't perceive it to be difficult, but 
I perceive it to be difficult because I can perceive the lack of connection that these people have. And I can't imagine having that. I can't imagine having to go through life with no empathy for others and no empathy for life. I just simply cannot imagine how inwardly painful that must be. Whether the person realizes that pain is there or not, the pain still must be there because of the psychopathic nature of the person. To me, that is a a huge shame. It's a huge burden and weight for any soul to have to bear, and I cannot help but feel pity for such people. That's just the way I am, folks. Deep down, I think that's the way most people are. I think most people want to forgive others, but this society trains us not to forgive. It teaches us anything but forgiveness. It teaches us to exact vengeance. And I don't really think that's the way forward. I just don't. I mean, I had a horrendous childhood, folks. I had things happen in my childhood that were terrible. And I've forgiven the people that perpetrated those acts. There's only one of those people that I still see occasionally, and I've forgiven them, but when I see them, they won't allow that forgiveness to exist. They won't allow me to forgive them because they will always agitate me. Whenever they see me, they'll push it until we have an argument probably because they aren't able to forgive themselves. So we part company and things never really improve, but I have forgiven them. I've forgiven anybody who's ever wronged me. Because when you can find that forgiveness in your heart for others, then you can find that forgiveness for yourself. And I think that's the important thing to do. And as I said, folks, when you look at the condition of mankind, or you look at the condition of human consciousness, and you look what's actually been done to this planet, there's no wonder that people are dysfunctional. It's no wonder that you were dysfunctional. And you can sit there and exact vengeance till the cows come home. It's not going to change anything. You can sit there and scream black and blue at everything that's ever happened to you and everything you've ever done, but you're not going to change things until you can put it all aside and realize that there's a clear path before us should we choose to step onto that path. And that's why I don't hate the psychopaths who run the world and I don't wish to exact vengeance upon them. I can forgive them, but they probably won't allow that forgiveness to sit. They won't allow that forgiveness to take hold because they don't have it in their own hearts to forgive themselves or anybody else. And they'll always exacerbate a situation to the point where Steps have to be taken to deal with these people. That's just the way it goes, folks. But again, you can do that without doing it from a vengeful perspective. You can simply do what needs to be done with goodness and forgiveness in your heart. But the thing to really remember here, folks, is that you can do all this for yourself as well. Because that's really what it's about. And that's what's made me want to do this radio show, because... The emails that I've been getting from people, some people seem almost tormented with themselves. Some people seem to be very unforgiving of themselves. And I don't think it's healthy. I don't think that is going to achieve anything. I don't think it's going to help change anything. I don't think it's ever going to help you get to where you need to be. And really, ultimately, it comes down to respect, folks. And I've always said that you will never be able to respect other people until you can respect yourself. You'll never be able to respect yourself until you forgive yourself. And like I said, folks, once you do forgive yourself and you respect yourself and you really see what's been done to the human race as a whole, then judgment becomes impossible because all of the problems that we face as a species are all a product of this society. And this society and this civilization is something that is completely unnatural to humankind. I think just the fact that we're all becoming aware of that is a huge step forward. I mean, I'm always telling people to be active. Two or three weeks ago, I did a show called Be Active or Abdicate. And people are saying, well, Max, how how can I be active? You you tell me to be active and I'm trying to be active. I'm spreading information. Well, it's, it's being active in everything that I've been talking about. It's being active in forgiveness, being active in respect for yourself. Because when you have respect for yourself, you do create ripples in your community. They might be little ripples, but they're still ripples. You do create ripples in your community. And once enough people get the message and they start creating ripples in their communities, then all of these ripples will eventually meet up and we'll find the whole pond has been reactivated. And that's the way it works, folks. But it's it's got to start at home. You know, We've all got to participate in this. But really, what we've got to participate in is ourselves. 
You know, you're all beautiful people out there. You're all beautiful, no matter what you've done or what you feel about yourself. You're all beautiful. You've just been led from the path of yourself. I mean, not everybody. There's a lot of people out there listening to this that are probably quite together and don't understand why I'm even doing a show like this. But I'm doing it because there's a lot of people who are unsure of themselves and they don't see the beauty in themselves. They don't see the value of themselves. And you've got to see that. You've got to be aware of it because you are valuable. Everybody is valuable. Everybody has worth. Everybody has beauty. It doesn't matter what you did. It matters what you do from this point forward. And that, that's where I believe you have to center yourself. You know, we're never going to find the way forward if we don't do this. There's a wise saying, I think it might even be one of Confucius's sayings or Buddha, and they said that the man who dwells on the past has no future. And those are very true words, folks. The past is gone, and the future is what we make it. But if we're too busy concerning ourselves with the past, then we don't see the future. We miss out on the future because we're locked into that mindset that brought us to where we are we have these dysfunctional lives that lead up to a certain point then it all leapfrogs over itself and lands in your face and people stay there in shell shock sometimes for years but you can't you've got to move forward you've got to realize that all of that stuff was simply to bring you to the realization that you just had and now the question is what do you do with that information what do you do with the time that you've got now that you know how reality works now that you know what you are and what your worth is what do you do with that time that's the important thing folks and it is important and it is important that we do something with the time because we are the custodians of life on this planet we're the custodians of freedom we're the custodians of the planet we're the custodians of the future for our children and it's important that we pay attention you know, I think we have all the information that we need now, and I think we have all the tools that we need to affect some real, lasting, positive change in the world. I've done literally hundreds of radio shows where I've attempted to help people in this understanding. And folks, look, with what I do on the shows, you've got to understand, I'm, I'm not perfect, I'm not a guru, I'm not some spiritualist. I don't pretend to have all the answers. All I come here to do is offer you one man's perspective based on the information that I've been able to assimilate. And the information comes from a myriad of sources. It comes from my own research and from everybody else's research. I mean, that's what you've got to do, folks. You've got to look at the whole thing, put it all together, see where the common threads lie, and offer your perspective on what you believe is going on and see if it resonates with other people. You know, we can look at the situation, we can find out what the problem is, and we need to do that in order to implement the solution. And ultimately, as I've said, all the rabbit holes that I've been down, all the people I've pointed the finger at, all the conspiracy theories and everything I've looked at, what I've discovered through my research, that ultimately what you're looking for is yourself. The old adage of change the inner world and you change the outer world. All of the basis of the spiritualists' understandings and even the New Age movement, all this stuff, there's grains of truth in all of this stuff. The New Age movement is particularly insidious, though, because it takes these grains of truth and it molds them into apathy and ego. That's basically what the New Age movement's for. And it's used to co-opt almost everything that gets off the ground. Everything that might suggest any spiritualism or anything, the New Ages always jump on board and start putting their messages from the Pleiadians in there and all sorts of stuff, which sends people running for the hills and scampering off under bushes and hiding from the information as much as they can. But that's what it's for. But there are grains of truth in all this, folks, because when you find that inner light inside you and really find it, then you begin to see the importance of applying it to the world around you. And that's what so many movements miss. They just bring you into their movement and they lock you in inaction or they lock you into somebody else's belief system. And I don't want to do that. I want you to find yourself. I want people to be free. I want people to discover themselves and to be free. That's what I want. I believe that we all have a duty, a responsibility to do this, to find ourselves and to be good custodians of the planet. And that's why... I offer you my perspective because 
I don't think the planet's heading in a good direction, and I think that we have the ability to change that if we could just wake up to ourselves. But look, I've done so many shows now. I've done six films. I've put out all the information that I've put out there just to attempt to do my little bit to shift things, do my little bit to help people wake up to themselves. And I hope that it's helped. I really do. But it's getting to the stage where I don't really know what else to say. And I know I've said this on a few shows. I've said it on and off for the last couple of years, actually, that I'm beginning to run out of things to say because I'm just repeating myself on a lot of these shows. It seems to be the same show said in different ways because I really believe that that is the answer. The answer is self-responsibility. The answer is respect for yourself and respect for others. The answer towards the system is non-compliance, to realise that governments are simply public trustees, and what more can I say? See, once you find that truth, then why deviate from that truth? Why attempt to bring people another idea when that is really the crux of the whole thing? And I don't like people to think of me as a leader or a guru or any of that sort of stuff because I'm not. I'm just a man, as flawed and dysfunctional as any other man. We all have our good points, we all have our bad points, and I'm certainly not perfect, nor do I make any claim to be perfect or to ever have been perfect. I'm perfect at being me. No one else can do that better than me. But is what I am perfect? I don't know. Is what I see and what I say and what I do perfect? I don't know. I simply do the best with what I've got. I didn't always. Sometimes I made mistakes. Sometimes I messed up. Sometimes I messed up big time. Sometimes I was my own worst enemy. Sometimes I hated myself. Sometimes I didn't want to be here anymore. Sometimes I felt suicidal. Sometimes I just wanted it all to end. Sometimes I thought I'd been born as a misfit. But it doesn't matter. These are just learning curves that people go through and all of those negative thoughts that I had about myself everything I've said everything I've done everywhere I've been everything all of it has all brought me to the point that I'm at right now sitting here talking to you offering you the perspective that I'm offering and that's the best I can do that's the best anyone can do so don't be hard on yourself and don't think that I'm a leader of anybody because I'm not. I'm just me, the same as you are just you. And a lot of the things that I say on the shows, I find that a lot of people resonate with what I say because really all I'm really stating is the obvious. If you really look at it, it's it's just obvious. Everything that I've said is just obvious. The power that you have is obvious. The power that everybody has is obvious. The fact that everybody is just as important as everybody else, and the fact that everybody is the center of their own universe, all of this is obvious, as is the obviously fictional nature of this paper-based reality that currently enslaves us. Because it's just a meme, folks. It's just an idea, and we can fix it. We can change it any time we want. As soon as we discover ourselves, we can change it. And that's all I've tried to do with these shows. But like I said, folks, I don't know how much longer... I'm going to keep doing it. Maybe I will bow out of the radio soon because I think I've said all that I need to say. I think I've said all that I can say. I really do. I mean, perhaps I'll knock the shows down to once a month or perhaps I'll just stop doing them altogether so that I can maybe focus on a new film. And I'd really like to get the Full Circle Project up and running. Because I think that is a way back as well. I think that's a template that we can use community by community to change things. And I've got a lot of work to do on it. I really need to try to create a kickstart or something, get some sort of a promo happening to get the funding we need to get this off the ground and get it to every community that we possibly can. And so maybe I will start concentrating my efforts on that and start concentrating a little bit on my local community around here. I would like to do the South American trip with those who would like to come with me. And I do intend to go back to Gaza. I'd like to spend as much time as I can in Palestine, actually, folks. I have a real fondness for Palestine. I 
have a real love for the people that I met there. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing them again. So we'll just see how we go, folks. But honestly, I can't see the point in just repeating myself. I think that the message that I've put out there on the Crow House is, is there. It's, it's there for the world to see. It's there for the world to find. If it resonates with you, then maybe you'll be able to take some of it on board. Maybe you can help change things. Maybe it will help you find yourself. Maybe it will help you discover your own self-worth and help change your own life. I know I've had a lot of emails from people that say this has happened. And I'm very, very grateful for the emails people send me when they they say that sort of stuff. And it's it's such an honor for people to have listened to the words and for people to have taken it on board and actually use the information to change their own perspective and restructure their own lives. And even the fact that people would do that, that people would take the information on board and actually give the words that I speak consideration is such a huge honor that you've all granted to me. And I can never thank you enough for that. But I'm getting a little old, folks. I'm 55 now, which isn't that old, but it's a little old. And perhaps it's time for me to do other things. I live a very meager existence. I'm staying in someone's shed at the moment. I don't have a lot of wealth or a lot of stuff, folks. I mean, I've got a few things that I use here for distributing DVDs and stuff, but... I don't really have a lot of possessions to worry about. I could put them all in a very, very small storage room and take off overseas or take off somewhere for as long as I want, really. It's just finding the funding to do it. But I really do believe that if I throw myself to the wind, I'll find that I can ride it. I think that's what happens, folks. There's a great saying said by a a lady whose name escapes me that says, "If if you cast yourself to the wind, you can ride it. And I believe that I can. I believe that the synchronicities will take me where I need to go. Life is a very synchronistic series of events after all, folks. We just miss out on that because we tend to structure ourselves by the parameters that society provides for us. But it is a very synchronistic series of events if we allow ourselves to be open to it. And so that is perhaps what I'll do quite soon, folks. Maybe I might last another month on the air here. Maybe I won't. I'll, I'll just play it by ear. I'll see how I go with this uh, this next week, folks. I'm still on this detox at the moment. I'm still on this Lefeneron treatment, and I'm still on this Candida release and eliminating these funguses from my body. Perhaps that's what's changing my, my attitude towards this, or perhaps that's what's making me want to move on a little bit. I don't know. But I'll keep you posted on all that, and we'll just see how we go over the next month but the thing is I never really wanted to be a radio host I never planned on being a radio host I thought it might be a good way to get the message out to people but it isn't something that I'd actually planned on doing or thought about how I would go about becoming one it just kind of got dropped in my lap and suddenly I was a radio host so that's kind of synchronistic in itself But yeah, it does take up a lot of time and it does kind of tie me to one place a lot because I've always got to be in this place every week and I've got to do the show and I've got to create the YouTube clip to go with it. So it's just kind of, it is a little bit of a routine, but I never really planned on it taking up as much time as it does. I never really planned on doing it for as long as I have. So I think I'll just examine that and examine my reality a little bit over the next few weeks, and we'll see how we go. But I'll keep you posted, folks. I'm not going to just disappear from the airwaves in a flash. I will keep you posted on what my plans are. All I ever really planned to do when I started this was to make the big picture, make the couple of short films that I made after it, and to make The Awakening. That was really the whole plan when I started making slideshows and putting them on YouTube. I never expected to be doing a radio show that would last for nearly five years the way it's done. It has been interesting and it's been fantastic to receive the response that I have from people. But yeah, folks, I'll just have to really examine things and see where we can go from here because it's one thing to sit here talking about the problems of the world and to talk about the changes we need to make. 
but it's another thing to get out there and make them. And that's really what I'd like to do. I'd like to really start stirring up the pot in local communities around the place and really attempt to get the people on the ground empowered and get the people on the ground acting and and participating in freeing us from the clutches that currently hold us. Because I think we can do it, and I think now's the time we have to do it. And I, I just wonder how much good I'm doing by continuing the radio shows when I could be out there on the ground participating in other ways. And as I said, I think that the information that I've put out there now is there. The information's all there for people who, who need it, people who find it, and I'm sure if they listen to enough of what has been posted, they're going to see the solutions. They're going to at least understand the perspective that I've been attempting to bring to people for so long now. And admittedly, folks, it's just one man's perspective, but I think all perspectives count, and perhaps there's something that can be gleaned from the perspective that I offer that will help to change things and will serve to help people wake up and will serve as instrumental in helping create a a new reality, a better reality, an honest and fair and equitable system for all of us, if we have to have a system at all, but something that's honest and fair and equitable anyway, something that empowers humankind, essentially a path, a way back to what we should be. Because all the talk that I've done about supporting shamanistic culture and the return to shamanistic traditions I don't do this because I think it's cool to talk about shamanism. It's cool to talk about ayahuasca or anything like that. I think that we have a much, much deeper connection to this beautiful living earth that we inhabit than what we actually believe. I think there's a lot more to reality than what we actually believe and a lot more than what we can perceive. And I think we have to find a way back to that. I think that the very future of our species depends on us finding a way back to it. I think that now's the time we can do it. Now's the best time we've ever had to do it because now we have the information there at our fingertips. Now we have the knowledge that we've always needed to really see what the problem is and to see what the solution is and not only to see it but to implement the solution. And now for the first time in recorded history at least, I think we are almost spiritually evolved enough to actually deal with freedom. And that's what we need to embrace and that's what this opportunity is because that's what all the problems are, folks. They're all opportunities, the opportunities that we need for change. And I think that these opportunities are being presented to us by creation itself, by consciousness itself. I think there's a way through it all. We just have to embrace the possibility of the world being different and embrace the possibility that maybe not all we believe to be true is true and maybe not all we believe is impossible is actually impossible. But that is it for me, folks. We've reached the end of the show again. It's been a pleasure talking to you again today, a little bit more of a serious show today. But I really did want to address some of the emails that I've been getting because I really am feeling for some of the the changes that people are going through and some of the lack of confidence that people are going through and the the journeys of self-discovery that people are going through. And I just wanted to offer my perspective on some of that. But thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you to anybody who's ever helped with the website. Thank you for everything you've said and and done for me. Thank you for listening to the shows. Thank you for giving me your time and energy every week. I'll look forward to speaking to you again next week. Please take care until then. In La Keshe.